In this video, we're going to talk about t-tests for parameters of the simple linear regression model. So just as a reminder, our model is yi equals beta naught plus beta 1 times xi plus a model error term for i equals 1 to n. Right? And we previously shown that we have um, we can estimate uh, beta 1 using b1 right and this equals um, SXY divided by SXX right and this is just shorthand notation for the sum of XI minus X bar times YI divided by the sum of XI minus X bar squared right? and then also we can estimate beta naught using B naught and this is equal to y bar minus b1 x bar. Alright, and so if we're able to make the normality assumption that our error terms, our model error, if we're able to assume that this is normally distributed with a mean of 0 and a variance of sigma squared, iid, and we're assuming that xi's are non-random, if we're able to make this normality assumption, then it directly follows that b1 is also a normal distribution, right? Because it depends on yi, which is going to be normal if the error term is normal, right? So b1 is also going to be normal, and we've already shown that the mean of b1 is beta 1. The expected value of b1 is beta 1. We've shown that previously. All right, so b1 is an unbiased estimator of beta 1. All right, and the variance of b1 we've previously shown is sigma squared divided by sxx. Similarly, using the assumption that the error terms are normally distributed, we can conclude that B0 is also going to be normally distributed. B0 depends on Y, which is normal, both through Y bar and through B1. So B0, it is normally distributed, and its mean is beta0. We've previously shown that it's an unbiased estimator. And its variance, we've previously shown, is sigma squared times 1 over n plus x bar squared divided by sxx. All right. All right, so if I have the normality assumption for my model parameters, I would theoretically be able to run a z-test. Right, but the name of this video is t test. Why am I running t test and not z test? Well, that's because I don't know what sigma squared is. What is sigma squared? Sigma squared is the variance of our model uh, error term, right? And we don't know what that variance is, but we do have an estimate of it. We have s squared, which is an estimate of sigma squared. Right, so it turns out that if you take uh, B1, so B1 minus beta 1, so let's basically, let's standardize it, subtract off the mean and divide it by its standard error, so take the square root of its variance, so just sigma, divide it by the square root of SXX, right? This is basically all I've done is I've standardized it. You might refer to this as a Z. Right, which follows a normal 0, 1 distribution, right? But if I don't know what sigma is, so I have to erase sigma and replace it with s, then it's no longer a z, but rather it's a t. And it's no longer normally distributed, but it's distributed with a t distribution with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. All right, so this is going to be distributed as a t distribution with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. All right, and we can do exactly the same thing with the intercept b0. So b0 minus beta 0, and then divided by the standard deviation. So take the square roots of everything. So sigma 
times the square root of 1 over n plus x bar over SXX, right? This is a normal 0, 1 because I've standardized it. And then since I don't know what sigma is, I'll raise sigma and I'll replace it with S. And once I've done that, I am again in a T distribution situation with N minus 2 degrees of freedom. All right, so using these two distributions, I can now run hypothesis test and calculate confidence intervals right for the slope and for the intercept. So let's go ahead and talk through how would I do it for the slope? What would it look like? If I wanted to run a hypothesis test, say I wanted to test whether beta 1 equals, uh, I can choose any number, right? Say I wanted to choose 5. And uh, my alternative would be beta 1 not equal to 5. Right? Then my test statistic, my t test statistic, would be my estimate, b1, minus, right? You always, you always assume your null hypothesis is true when you're doing your test statistic. So when I'm looking for what's beta 1, I go to my test statistic, and I plug this guy in. So I'd have minus 5. And then I would have whatever my estimate of s is divided by the square root of s x x. Right? I want to point out that this is this is called the standard. This is the standard error for b1. Okay, that denominator piece is called the standard error for b1. And I'm pointing that out because you're going to see that. Uh, you're not going to have to calculate that on your own. Rather, uh, a lot of programs, they'll, they'll give this to you when you're uh, doing an analysis. Okay, But they'll call it the standard error for, for whatever parameter you're talking about. So that term standard error, that means that it is the standard deviation of an estimator. Okay. All right, so then I would calculate my test statistic. And then if I had a two-sided test, I would look and I would see, okay, well, you know, let's calculate the probability of observing that test statistic or one greater than or less than. So I would look at my area in the tails, and that would be my p-value. Of course, I could also do a one-sided test. So H O H one, I could do greater than 5, right? And I would have the same test statistic, except if it's greater than 5, I would only be interested in the p-value being on the right side. And, of course, I could do the left-sided test as well. Less than 5. Right? And I would have a left-sided test. So if you're interested in testing whether or not uh, the slope is a particular number, this is the way you would do it, right? You can calculate your test statistic using your sample estimate uh, minus whatever number it is that you're interested in, divided by the standard error. That's your test statistic. And then you figure out the p-value for based off that test statistic in your hypothesis. Okay, whether or not you have a two-sided, one-sided, left-sided, or right-sided, right? Okay, um, same thing goes for testing hypothesis of beta naught, or the intercept, okay? So if I wanted to test a hypothesis HO for beta naught, say I want to know whether or not that is equal to any number here, I could choose like 10. I want to know if the intercept is 10, right? The alternative would be that the intercept is not 10, right? And my test statistic would be uh, whatever my estimate is, minus 10, divided by the standard error for B0, uh, which is this mess down here. So S, S times the square root of 1 over N plus X bar squared divided by SXX, right? And again, you don't have to calculate this. This is the standard error for B0, this denominator piece down here. OK? All right. Uh, and then you would, again, you could have a, uh, this, this would be a two-sided test. You could also have a right-sided or a left-sided test. 
I want to go to Excel and show you that Excel does this for you. If I, I, I did this uh, analysis uh, in a previous video, and I'm going to provide the link to the data in the com or in the um, description of the video. But um, basically, I had data on uh, life expectancy and their income, and I wanted to know whether or not income predicts life expectancy. So I did a regression. And uh, previously, we talked about the ANOVA results. And now uh, we're talking about these T stats, right? These test statistics. And so let me, let me go ahead and highlight that. That's what we're talking about right now. We're talking about these test statistics. In particular, let's talk about these P values. Now, what, th what this is the test statistic. What is this testing? By default, Excel is always going to test. Uh, whether or not the um, intercept is equal to zero, right, and and whether or not the slope is equal to zero, okay, and that's what Excel is going to test for you. So if you're interested in something else, you do have to do it by hand, um, as far as I know. I don't think Excel will do that test for you. Um, it's relatively simple because they give you the coefficient and then you would subtract off whatever you think the coefficient is, right? Whatever you're testing and then divide it. They do give you the standard error. So it's just the difference between the coefficient and your null hypothesis uh, divided by the standard error. And then you can calculate your test statistic and p-value. Okay. So this is testing whether or not the coefficient is equal to zero and it's doing a test statistic. And it finds this really, really tiny p-value. So yeah, this is significantly not zero, right? 65. Same thing here. Uh, we have this this uh, coefficient for the slope, this estimate for the slope. Here's our test statistic, and here's the p-value. Really, really tiny. So this is significantly not zero. Now, for the simple linear regression case, I do want to point out that this p-value is the same as this p-value here. And in the previous video, we discussed how to calculate this p-value using an ANOVA test. Well, it turns out that the ANOVA test will give the exact same result as the t-test. Makes sense because we're testing the same thing. The ANOVA test is testing whether beta uh, 1 is equal to 0. That was the null hypothesis. And the alternative was that beta 1 does not equal 0 for a simple linear regression. Right, that's what this was testing here. Well, we're testing the same thing. So this is what it's testing here. But we're testing the same thing here. So we should have the same results, and we, and we do. Right, you can show that uh, when you square the, the test statistic, the T test statistic, uh, you'll get the F statistic here, OK? So I'll leave that as exercise for you to do. But um, it's important to note that these results, they should be the same, and they, they are the same. Okay.